into a brazen labor because Esther was a pagan goddess of fertility. They would take chicken eggs, they would dip them in the blood, and hand them out to everybody for fertility rights. That's where your colored eggs come from. If you don't believe me, go look it up on YouTube. They even know about it. And Christmas is even worse. It's not Jesus' birthday. Yeshua was born September, October at the Feast of Trumpets. And it shows you everything that God ever did in the Old Testament was done on His feast days, not our pagan. Christmas is also another feast that was created by fallen angels that was given to Cain. Do you think that your Christmas, well, we don't worship on Christmas for that reason, and we don't celebrate those Christmas trees for that reason. Do you think those principalities are stupid? When they created those feasts, they put them there for a reason. Why do you think of the word Jeremiah? I think it's Jeremiah 23. The Lord says you hang up that evergreen tree and you hang silver and gold balls upon it. And it's an abomination to me. Why does Yahweh say your Christmas tree is an abomination? And if you know where your Christmas balls come from, what they would do is take the priests and make them eunuchs. They cut their testicles off. The priests of the worshippers of Baal and Chemesh, they dip them in silver and gold and hang them on their Christmas trees. And I hope every time you see a Christmas tree, that's what you think about. <laughs> Those Christmas lights you put in your window, it's for the worship of Yule. Yule was a pagan god that would let other demons into the house. So when they would put those candles in their windows, they would invite the demons of Yule, fallen angels, into their house. You wonder why the church is sick. Yuletide greetings. Don't Yuletide greeting me. I don't want your Yuletide blessing. Yeah. Study to show yourself approved. That's right. Come on. Study to show yourself approved. The Roman Catholic, you know, the United States of America. Who founded the United States? Uh, here we go. Christopher Columbus. And who came over? Christian. And established Christians. What were they called? Pilgrims. And why did they come over here? Freedom of religion. To get away from the pagan idolatry that was going on in the Roman Catholic Church in Europe and in their own churches. It was against the law in the United States of America to celebrate Easter or Christmas. They said it was an abomination. The early church fought with each other over that. The church of the East had nothing to do with the church of the West because they let Catholicism come in and start instituting these pagan holidays to bring the pagans in. Yeah. When your Bible was chosen, you know there was pagans in the room? Giving their input to what scriptures would be put into the New Testament? Do you know the first Bible was the, 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 uh, the, the uh, Geneva Bible? It was written by men from Switzerland who got away and wrote that Bible and said that the Torah is still valid. The Roman Catholic Church didn't like it. They wrote the King James Version and issued that. And when they issued that, they made the Torah invalid. Come on. I'm just talking truth, saints. Because it's going to choose where we go, all of us, one way or another. That's what prophets are about. That's what prophets are about. Even the Old Testament, the key of the prophet is he brings everybody back to the Torah. The Lord said, any man that calls himself a prophet and does not bring back the people to the Torah is a false prophet. I'm excited. Corinthians. 
at the end. So we can see that the John the Baptist ministries are coming to make the crooked places straight, which means, I almost forgot, they're coming to bring the secrets. So we know that the church was birthed at the Pentecost. We know Yeshua was crucified in that, so on all the feasts of the Lord. Everything happened on God's feast, and it still does. Anything big happens on His feast. So Passover, He's, he's crucified. Three days later, He's resurrected it, first fruits. And then He burst the church at Pentecost. Amen? So it's a pattern of what happened in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the Hebrews came out of, does anybody know what another name for Hebrew is? Hebrew means to cross over. But another word for cross over is, is overcome. That means when we're going through this walk, we're just, if we're going to overcome, get it? Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> up here like, wow, I got a revelation! <laughs> So now 
it's time for the church to come out of the wilderness into the promises of Yahweh. Now, when they went into the promised land, what did they go to do? They went to fight the fallen angels. That's our battles not against flesh and flesh and blood, but against principalities. If you don't prepare yourself now, you will never be prepared for the battle we're getting ready to enter into. This battle is intense. It's going to be humongous. It's already started. You can see it in the nations. I'm going to show you. I don't know if I'll get to it today, but tomorrow I'll definitely show you all those areas in the Middle East that are in turmoil. We're all controlled by principalities and still are. The whole Muslim people are descendants of those fallen angels. Like why? For we are God's fellow workers, making God still. You are God's building according to the grace of God which was given to not me. As a wise master builder, that word is used in the Old Testament for those who build God's temple. So Paul says, I know how to build God's house. I have laid the foundation. Paul said, I laid the foundations. Well, what do the apostles do? They teach the secrets. So he said, we got to lay foundations. And others build on it. But let each one take heed to how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation with silver, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hair, a straw. So Paul's saying there's six things that you can build on this foundation with. Gold. What did you see? In those people's mouths. What did I tell you? They were falling from the ceiling. Gold. Silver. You see silver falling in our meetings too. And precious stone. I told you diamonds have fallen in our meetings. Which means overcomer. The Lord was telling me, you're building on the right foundation. You're building on Christ. Others are building in wood, hay, and straw. Those are all things that are carnal. That's religion. Each one's work will be made clear for the day. What day is that? The day of the Lord. will be clear because it will be revealed by fire. So the fire is going to reveal it. Amen? What's the fire? The secrets. The revelation. So, as this fire is coming out, do you realize what you've been building on? What kind of foundation you've really built on? Has it been silver, gold, precious stones, or has it been wood, hay, and stubble? What have you laid it on? Has it been apostolic and prophetic, or have you built on teachers, preachers, and evangelists because they don't have the gift? My Bible says the church is not to run to be run by pastors or teachers. But Jesus said it's supposed to be run by apostles and prophets. If anyone's work which he has built on and endures, it will receive a reward. So if you build with silver, gold, precious stones, all those things will pass through the fire and you'll get the reward. What did Paul say he ran for? Ran for the prize, ran for the reward. If anyone's work is burned, it will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet as through the fire. Meaning, Paul's not saying they're going to be saved. It's, Paul's saying the only way you can be saved is through the fire. Through the fire of revelation. Those that make it through. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For God, the temple of God is holy, which
which you, which temple you are. So we know that silver, gold, and precious stones were all in God's temple. Silver, symbolic of salvation. Gold, redemption. Precious stones, the tablets. Amen? Matter of fact, the book of Revelation says that the bride, the new Jerusalem, shall come down out of heaven. The new Jerusalem is made out of precious stones. Meaning the bride wears precious stones, like the high priest, he wore the ephod, which was precious stones. It says that the stones, the walls were 144 cubits thick. That's 12 times 12. There were precious stones, meaning there were 12 stones. 12 again. There was the size of it. It's 12,000 cubits high, 12,000 cubits long, 12,000 cubits wide. The, the doors on it are 12 doors. There's 12 angels at those 12 doors. There's 12 pearly doors. The angels are holding 12 shofars, and there's 12 foundations. There's only one way to become the bride, the number 12. She's an apostolic people. She's apostolic. And she has deeper revelation. She's built on the revelation of the apostles. What does it mean when Paul, he talks about that building and the revelation of the apostles coming forward? Clearly, it means that Ephesians 3, Paul says the apostles teach the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. So if we're built on those foundations, which are level, well, the revelation says the Lord's going to bring out a plumb line to make sure it's all level, that the secrets are there. But if we're building on that revelation, everything is level. Jesus is the cornerstone. And Jesus is the capstone. He's the first and last stone. And as soon as we lay the foundations, then we build the Lord. Then we build the Messiah. We haven't even built him yet. The gospel has not gone out yet. Because literally in Hebrew, the word gospel means a feast of meat. We've been drinking milk, and we've been preaching milk. And we we are not going nowhere until the meat. Paul says the meat is the secrets of the kingdom. Amen. He said, kids are still babies. He said, I had to feed you with milk and not with meat. Because you haven't grown up yet. The church needs to grow into maturity so that the revelation can be released. The revelation of the kingdom. We know that the New Jerusalem is two Hebrew words, Yaru, Shalom. Yaru is the root of the word Torah, law. So the New Jerusalem, which is the bride, she's covered in Torah. And Shalom, which you all should know, is peace. But we look at those two words, we put them together. Yaru also means to teach the rain. And Shalom means to bring restoration or peace. So the New Jerusalem, she teaches the reigns of restoration. That's the bride. That's the Lamb's wife. Hallelujah. Every name speaks up. Every name function. Amen? Hey. If you want to be part of the last church, you know why we go to churches that only last 45 minutes, an hour and a half? We think we're in a big church, but it's lasting an hour and a half. So we sit around and we fall asleep. And when we fall asleep, there's no fire in us anymore. We're asleep, so we sleep. It's, it's a spirit of slumber. It's a demon. I'm tired. I work. No, you got a demon. Because I see people go to football games and they've been working all week and they're all tired. And they go there, they might drag themselves in that football game, but they're jumping up and down and screaming because their favorite team scored a touchdown, which is irrelevant to the kingdom. Because our first love has changed. That's fact. Well, we can only, you know, our mind can only retain 45 minutes of information. Then why did Paul preach to the wee hours of the morning? Your carnal mind, those saints, work three times harder than any of us just to survive. But they were there till the next morning learning what Paul said, who preached through the whole night because he knew how important it was and they knew how important it was to get the revelation. Why don't our churches look like those churches? How long did our church go? 
five hours, sometimes six, I've even gone seven. But you ain't going to learn this stuff in one, half an hour in church. You're going to pay the price. Come on. See, the foolish virgins said, give us your oil. They wanted something given to them. They wanted free grace. The wise said, you got to go buy the oil. you got to go buy the teaching because it will cost you to get ready for the kingdom. It's time to start buying things. Come on. Each one's word will be come clear, but then they will declare it. Read that. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool. Why? Because in that age you were teaching the Bible carnally, that he might become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, I will catch the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Now then, hallelujah. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God having been built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets and the Elijah ministries, Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, yeah. whom the whole house, is a uh, whole building, being fit together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Yeah. And in you also are being built together for a dwelling place by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, The wall of the city had 12 foundations, as Revelation 21, 14. And there were names on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So, this new Jerusalem will not be built on carnality. It will not be built by pastors. Come on. It will not be built by evangelists. It will not be built by teachers. It will be built by apostles and prophets for this final move. It will be built by these Elijah ministries to present. Hallelujah. In the Hebrew culture, when a girl was getting married, the father of that girl would go, or the father of the bridegroom would come and meet the father of the bride to be. And they would sit down and they would cut a covenant. And when that covenant was cut, they would drink a glass of wine. And the father of the bridegroom would say, okay, I'm going to go home and have my son build a house for his bride. Okay. So that so from that time forward, the bride would begin to put together her bridal party. So he would go out and get a bunch of, she would go out and get a bunch of women that she wanted to be in her bridal party. And they would begin to gather things and put together the diary. And she would begin to prepare herself to meet her husband that they might be married. In Hebrew, marriage takes place. When the woman gets impregnated by the man. It doesn't happen in ceremony. It happens when the two come together. Consummation. Does anybody know another name for that? Communion. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus said the seed is the word. At least when the, when the word comes, we get pregnant with the word, a marriage takes place. So, if you're getting pregnant with this revelation, you're already sitting at the marriage table. Yeah. If you're waiting to get swept away or something else, you're going to miss it. <laughs> if you want a Western wedding, you missed it. So, in the middle of the 
tonight. Everybody say in the middle of the night. Middle of the night. The friends of the bridegroom, they would come into the city.
to present you as a chaste virgin, holy and pleasing to Christ. See, Paul, see, we go to church and say, well, it's not our job to clean the fish, it's just not our job to catch the fish. No, because they're not apostles. The apostles know how to clean the church. They give them a break because they're going through a cleaning process too. We're not done in that area yet. Or else I'd be up here blowing and you wouldn't even sit there because you'd be running out the doors. Because the glory would be here. It'd be too late at that point anyway. Amen? So the friends, the, 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 Paul also said it was his job to present the church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. That meant he was a priest and he was making the plan the lambs perfect. When you go to 1 Corinthians 2, those that are perfect, Paul said, I speak to them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this age nor the rulers of this age are coming to nothing. I speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers they this age knew, for they knew they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he said, those that are perfect lamps are those that are learning the secrets and the mysteries. Those are the ones that are mature. Actually, that's chapter 2, chapter 3. He said, I, I cannot speak to you as mature. He said, I had to treat you as babies. I had to give you milk. When that, by now you ought to be teachers. He goes, I can't even let you teach. Because you haven't learned the deeper things. Are you ready to become teachers? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor Philip and I have already talking. Pastor Philip says we gotta at least do this once every three weeks to a month. We gotta be holding these services. Because this area needs to hear and come into this. Come on! Yes, 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 yes. Come in. So next time I come in here, how many of you are going to bring two or three friends? All right, so we should have this place filled up next time, amen? amen. And we get this place filled up, we'll go get another one. We'll buy a building. We'll buy a building, yeah. and we'll blow this thing wide open and feed us. I guarantee you. I guarantee you it'll change everything. It'll change everything around you. Amen. If you let the Lord do what He wants to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, I want you to understand. I'm just scratching surfaces right now. That's right. I, I'm just, there's so much more. And I can see some of your faces. You're doing, wow. <laughs> it's like the first time I sat in front of Catherine Woman. I was like. She, I thought she was the Holy Ghost. She had that big flowing gown. She moved around like real slow. I was like, this woman's of the other world. But you know what's really going on is that we're transitioning. Yes. I'm going to teach on this tomorrow morning at 10 and tomorrow night at 6. Come on, yes. Woo! Yeah, we're going to, the next two nights, I'm going to, tomorrow morning and night, we're going to teach on it again. Worship team will be here tomorrow morning. But I want to say this. When you start seeing the plan, it's, it's going to change. It's going to change the way you think. And the Hebrew, when you start seeing the Hebrew, you're going to really begin to understand what the Hebrew is saying. Amen? Because there's just things we take for granted. We obviously can't do it in one night, but I can see, I can see it's all hungry. And that's all the Lord requires. And I can show you everywhere in Scripture when He, when His people, He said, you're going astray. Like Pastor Phillips said, there was, if there's only a few righteous men in Sodom, He would have saved it. Amen? Listen. When he said a few righteous men, he was talking about those that understood the secrets. That's what he's really talking about. Meaning, meaning, if, if eight of you submit yourself to God's word, it, you could save this whole city. 
I saved the whole state from God's judgments. And, and not only that, the Lord says that He says, I'm going to cover the, the, the glory of the knowledge of the Lord. What does that mean? The knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the ocean covers the sea. That means the glory must be understood. Because if we don't understand what the Lord wants done, we could kill people. That's right. Come on. That's right. You'll throw one of your little pepper tantrums, and boom, there goes the whole east side of the city. So the Lord, you got to trust us. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the foundations are being laid now. Foundations of revelation. And those foundations are taking us to a new place. Hallelujah. A final place. Pastor Philip, can you lift that projector just a little so we get that, those words down? For the foundation... I keep seeing Joseph. <laughs> For the foundation of the city was adorned with precious stones, of all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third shel uh, shelconde, the fourth emerald, and actually that's the rose of the ephod on the high priest. So, if you really want to understand that, the Lord's saying that the new Jerusalem, is, she has the ephod on it. This reason of Paul, Ephesians 3 1. Here again, he's talking about those of us having the revelation which is given by his apostles and prophets. He goes on to say, because of the revelation, the Gentiles are now fellow heirs. Hallelujah. I'm going to end it there. I'll pick it up tomorrow. Now, Hebrew is God's language, it's not Jewish language. Come on. The Jewish people were entrusted with it. Yes. You know you were engrafted into the covenant. When did you become engrafted in? I'm not sure now. When you're born again. <laughs> but you know who received the first Torah? Moses. Abraham. Oh, yeah. It says he was perfect. It is understanding. It said he knew the Torah. Paul says he knew Torah and walked Torah 430 years before Moses. That's right. He didn't even have the tablets. He just lived it. Wow. Amen. Amen. Who came to Abraham? No, Kizadek came to Abraham. No, Kizadek was a high priest. Like Amen. But had no beginning and no end. Right. So he came and kind of covenant with Abraham. Right. Jesus. Right. What covenant did he cut? The bride. The marriage. No, Kizadek, Abraham was not a Jew. Abraham was a nomad. He was a Gentile like you and me. First covenant came to the Gentiles before the Jewish people.
Abraham was the father of many nations. His name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Meaning his purpose and his character was the birth of all the nations. And Paul says that that covenant is for us to rule the world. So I don't care about the Buddhists. I don't care about the Muslims. I don't care about the Catholics. The final church will rule the nations. No matter how bad it looks, Yeshua said to them, they're overcoming we give a rod to rule the That's good news. And, and you think about what it would take right now to pull everybody in and change the whole world. With all the garbage we've seen, with Obama, abomination. We're an abomination now. Yes, yes, that's right. All this stuff. The Lord says none of it matters. Because the bottom line is, you're going to rule everything. Amen. Everything. Because that was given to Adam to rule the nations. He said, you're all the fowl of the earth, the fish of the earth, and the beast, the, the beast of the earth, and the fish of the sea. Remember that? Yeah. And you dominion over the fowl of the earth, the beast of the earth, and the fish of the sea. According to scripture, the fowl of the earth is Satan. According to scripture, the beast of the earth is our beastly nature. And the fish of the sea are the nations. It's a very beautiful picture. When we take dominion over our beastly nature, then the Lord will give us dominion over Satan, the fowl of the earth, because he comes down in the book of Revelation. Then the Lord will give us the great harvest, the fish of the seas, because the apostles were fishers of men. That's the order this guy subdued to the kingdom, to the glory that's upon us. Amen? Amen. So this covenant of Abraham, this covenant of Abraham must be fulfilled. You take a look at that. Turn with me over to Psalm 110. You brought your Bibles and we'll end up here. The Lord I'm not going to get into all of it. So we know Melchizedek. Out of everything I said tonight, this is the best. I always like to leave on something powerful. Out of all the glory and everything. The rabbis teach that when the high priest come, or when the Messiah would come, he had to first come to the high priest. And we know that when Jesus Yeshua came, he did not come to the high priest. He did not come to Caiaphas. The first person he actually came to was John the Baptist on the road. We have to understand why. Because the high priestly order, Caiaphas was a, he was a Levi, but he was not a descendant of Aaron, because all the descendants of Aaron were high priests. So Caiaphas was a false high priest. Oh my. He bought his position. He paid the Roman government to get that position. So he could move it because he was like the president of Israel. He was, he was not only the president, he was the chief justice. He was the head judge. Amen. So he had big control. Right? So, but he was not from the order of Aaron. So people wonder why Jesus didn't talk to him. He didn't talk to him because he was a false high priest. And the Lord ain't going to talk to us either for false high priests. But still the Torah has to be fulfilled and Jesus must talk to a high priest first. And so who was this high priest that the Jews said he had to come to first? Obviously the first person he came to was John the Baptist who came in the spirit of Elijah. Right? 
So if he came to John first in the spirit of Elijah, if we read, John's mother was Elizabeth. It says that she was a daughter of Aaron. Uh -huh. And it says that his father, Zechariah, was from the chief of, uh, tribe of Abijah, which were all descendants of Aaron. Uh -huh. Meaning John's mother and father were both high priests. Amen. Well, this is powerful. Because this shows what we're coming into, you and I. This shows what the Lord wants to do in us. Amen? So, Jesus, Yeshua comes to John, and he says, we must do this to fulfill all righteousness. What is righteousness? Right understanding. Because you have to baptize me. Right? You have to baptize me to, to bring the Torah into fruition. To do what's right. Now if you understand Jewish customs, when the old high priest was leaving, and the new high priest was coming in, the old high priest would baptize the new high priest when he would lift him up, he would say, my order is done. The, say he was the house of Cohen. The house of the order of Cohen is done. And now the house of whatever is now the high priesthood over the nation. So now he's in control as judge, as king, as all authority over the nation. So... Let's read Psalm 110. Huh. This is the scripture that a lot of the pre, a lot of rabbis have a hard time with. And you're going to see why. Adonai is another name that is used because they don't like to pronounce the word Yudebabe or Yahweh. Or we sometimes we say Jehovah. Right. Notice the first word for Lord there is all capitalized, which is the word Yod Evave, the sacred name or secret name. And the second word for Lord is Adonai. And the Lord said to Adonai, my, and the Lord said unto my Adonai. The Lord is not talking to himself here. <laughs> so we're going to ask ourselves who Adonai is. And I hear it. And Yahweh said unto my Adonai, Sit thou at my right hand. Who sits at the right hand of the Father? Jesus. Yeah. Yeshua. Did you remember? When Caiaphas was expecting Jesus, he said, He said, Tell us now, are you the Christ? His reply was, It is as you say that I am. But shortly here after this, you will see me sitting at the right hand of power. Amen. So when he said that, who sits at the right hand of power? Adonai. So Yeshua was saying, I'm Adonai. He was saying, I'm Yahweh, I'm Yode, Abe. I'm the eternal God. Amen. Next time Jehovah Witness comes to your house, teach him this. <laughs> gonna blow their doors right off. Yeshua, Jesus, was saying he was Adonai. That's why Caiaphas said blasphemy. This man has spoken blasphemy. He's saying that he's God. He's saying he's Yahweh. And he ripped his garment. That brought a whole curse right there. We're not getting that. It's too much. So, he said, what more do we need to hear of him? Take him out and crucify him. They wouldn't crucify Yahweh. They really didn't crucify him, they multiplied. <laughs> so the, Bible, well, the Bible says he, he expired. Yes. It doesn't mean he died. I love this. Yeah. The word expire means he breathed out the ruach. To breathe in spine, to breathe into us. He released the hope. Satan released the Spirit of God over the whole earth. He didn't realize what he did. Uh oh. Now we got a problem. We got the Spirit of God over the whole earth. But watch this. And Yahweh said to Adam, I said, 
at my right hand until you make my enemies your footstool. Paul says in the book of Hebrews <laughs> that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father to all of his enemies are his footstool. Amen? Amen. Well, why doesn't Jesus have all of his enemies under his feet? Why does he have dominion under your feet? Do you have dominion? Meaning he will sit at the right hand of the Father. He will not return until every enemy is put under his feet. So he's sitting and waiting. What's he waiting for? Because the, the scripture said he took dominion, he took captivity into dominion. It says he has authority over everything. So why does the scripture say, why does Paul say his enemies are under his feet? Because the feet are part of the legs, which are part of the body, which is us. And he's the head of the church. So when he takes dominion over the body, yeah. ooh, look out. Because there has some, every enemy is under your feet. That was the word dominion. Dominion means everything is under my feet. I have full authority over everything. The Lord says, the scripture says that God is an enmity with a carnal mind. The word enmity means fighting. So what's he fighting? Tell you what he's fighting right now. Some of you in here are going, I don't know about all this. Man. This don't sound like my church. My denomination doesn't teach this. Man, I never heard this before. Man, 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 man. That's a mocking spirit. Yes, come on. Actually, to make it real, if I'm teaching under the power of the Holy Spirit, under an apostolic prophetic mantle, I'm teaching under the anointing of the Spirit, which is Christ. The Scripture said that Jesus went anointed all, anointed all with the Holy Spirit and fire. So the anointing is the Holy Ghost. So if I'm teaching by the Holy Ghost, and you are fighting what's being said, that means you have a spirit of anti-Christ. <laughs> the spirit of antichrist is anti-anointing or anti-teaching because he's the teacher and the counselor but John didn't say the antichrist was the Pope of course he probably is that's what he teaches but the antichrist Paul, John said the spirit of antichrist has come out from amongst us and we know that they are antichrist because they did not stay under apostolic teachers. They stayed in the church. They wanted to teach their way, but they didn't want to learn the deeper things of the kingdom. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Can I get an amen. 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 Come on. They teach on the C word. It's money. Amen. Amen. Give me the house, Lord. <laughs> And Yahweh, verse 2, and Yahweh will send the rod of his strength out of Zion. That's you, that's Zion is another name for Jerusalem. To rule in the midst of his enemies. So he's going to send a rod to rule in the midst of his enemies. Does anybody know what the rod is? It's a shepherd's staff, which is the yoke, which is the teaching. Amen? Because his enemies is the carnal mind. So the teaching will solve your beast. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. And you've got to be willing to do this. You can't, man, I don't know about that. I want to be foolish. I don't feel like learning. I'd rather watch cooking shows. I'd rather watch rugby or soap operas. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauty of holiness. Oh, hallelujah. From the womb of the morning, and we're stepping into that new day. This is the womb right now. Thou hast to do thy youth, the reign of thy youth. 
You're going to see the rain. You've been hearing the rain already. The Lord Yahweh has sworn and will not relent that thou art a priest, that you, Adonai, that you, Jesus, are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That you, Adonai, Jesus, are Melchizedek. And, and Adonai and, and Adonai at thy right hand shall strike the kings in the day of his wrath. What's he going to come under? He's going to strike those mindsets. He shall judge among the heathen. A heathen is another name for a person that doesn't understand scripture. He shall fill the places with dead bodies and he shall wound the heads of many countries. And he shall drink from the books of brook on the way. Therefore, shall he be lifted up. Look at that. Watch. Therefore, shall he lift up the head. Maybe he's going to take the heads off all these kings. The Lord wants to take your head off. Amen. You can get ready your way So if he's going to remove your head, that means that he has, you cannot understand, you know, it's one thing to preach this. It's another thing to receive and get pregnant with it and see the glory that's coming behind it. It's a wonderful thing to be used in it. And we're going to see things, and I've already, I just got a taste, I mean, look, the gold teeth and that stuff, that's, that is, it's something that makes you awe. Yes. Like, I, I sit in my bed at night and I think, Lord, if, if you can change somebody's tooth into gold, you can, in a few seconds, you can easily give us a glorified body. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. I want it. He can do it fast. I want it. <laughs> so if the Lord can turn a tooth into gold, He can turn our bodies into a glorified body in an instant. Amen. Amen. He can easily do it. Matter of fact, if you, if you read the story of Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, yeah. she was a woman of promise. And God, Yahweh said to Abraham, He said, when the time's right, I want to, I want to give you a son, a promised son, through, through Sarah. And he was, you know, Abraham didn't believe him. He did his own thing. He birthed an Ishmael. We all birthed Ishmaels in our lives. Oh, yeah. That's carnality, right? But the Bible says that Sarah was beautiful. If you look at the word in Hebrew, it literally means she, I forget, she was up in her 90s, like 98 or something. Right. She lived out in the desert in a tent. She looks like she'd be living out in the desert here in all this hot weather. So she must have looked like a broom. A broom, yeah. Amen. Thanks for that. But when the Lord touched her, right. the, the Hebrews clear. She looks like she was 16 again. Amen. I'll get a hold of that one. Abraham was going, hey, he was up there too. He was going, woo! Sis. <laughs> Man! Yo! Sis! Alright, you're my wife! We're married! We have to fulfill the contract now! <laughs> she went, you're too old, I don't want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she knew the promise. She knew it was in Abraham, the nations, as the Lord said that. The then covenant of Abraham, check it out. So now we see Yeshua, Jesus, is out of line, is Melchizedek, who came cut the covenant with Abraham. So when John baptized him in the Jordan, 
he passed the Aaron priesthood, high priest on, to Melchizedek, which we moved into an eternal covenant at that point. Our high priest is eternal. He is you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs>